Welcome, everyone. I'll try to contain my giddiness. It is just so amazing after um, time not being together to suddenly be together. This many beautiful faces, full persons in this beautiful space. You'll hear me say it over and over today. I can't help myself. Welcome, my name is Sarah Turner and I'm the president at the North Bennett Street School. It's always just an incredibly special day when we can be here together in the Old North Church. I know that this is a group of very, very active people, doers, makers, but I'm gonna just ask you to kind of quiet yourselves for a minute, take a moment to be still, and really think about where you are on this day in this amazing building. This place has so much history, so much legacy. You know it, of course, from the very, very early days of the American Revolution. The church was built in 1723. There's so many stories, though, of people whose lives entwined in these very pews where you are. And the church has done a really wonderful job telling that story. I encourage you to read on their site Um, There is a great series that talks about the individuals that sat in these pews, that spent their time here, uh, really a broad range of people, surprising stories, and it really makes me think about how history and progress is all done by individuals working as a collective, and that seemed like a really fitting thought for today. So take a minute and think about yourselves on that long, long continuum. We're here to celebrate your efforts, of course, your collective, the class of 2022. We're celebrating with family and friends and fans. Our students seem to have a lot of fans. For those of you not able to join us in person, thank you for joining us at a distance. In recent years, we've had family and friends joining from all around the country, all around the world. It's been amazing to have this linkage, so thank you for being here. It takes a lot of people to help folks get through an education, to help folks get through training. So thank you to the people who supported our students. You all really deserve our appreciation. Perhaps closest to our students at the bench, at their piano, in the field, are our faculty. Each of our instructors really amaze every year with their ability to teach and mentor and lead all while they work so closely and um, by hand, by tool with our students. Our faculty share their networks, they share their professional experience, their wisdom, and their learning. And they do this so that we can do projects that will benefit and contribute to our communities. They do this through good work, done well, with care and with skill. They were joined this year by a group of new members, new teaching members, our teaching assistants, who help prepare materials, give attention uh, where a little extra attention is needed, and support uh, particular parts of the process. In this, we're so glad to be growing a new group of teachers and mentors uh, to the benefit of our students, our school, and our fields. So thank you faculty, and thank you TAs. I see our faculty in the back. Thank you, thank you TAs. Appreciation also goes to the staff. Every day the staff makes the parts of this many-parted place come together to the strength of our programs. You bring new voices, new people to us, you link craft and trade partners and supporters to the school, and you help students navigate the balance between life and school and work. The staff always has an eye for how things could be better, what opportunities exist, and how North Bennett can truly function as a whole community. And I'd like to just make a special recognition to Tony Malionek upstairs playing the organ today. Tony is a... Tony is a graduate of both our basic and advanced piano programs, and it's things like Tony playing, the fife and drum band, all of you sitting together that are the markers of tradition for us, and I'm so glad to have them back. Tony, welcome back. Gathering to launch our graduates into this new chapter gives us a moment to reflect on the path that it took to be here. We know that the last years have had some particular bumps and particular challenges. 
But together, we were able to stay focused on the work at hand. Students repaired buildings, and there seemed to be a lot of trees crushing buildings, crushing roofs in the last two years, giving great projects for our carpenters. Our students built furniture for friends and clients. You learned from historic instruments. You collaborated with local schools to revive and recycle old jewelry. Our programs visited small locksmithing shops and large hospitals to see work at all scales. We experienced exhibitions again, bringing guests back to the building to see books and pianos, and even part of Notre Dame Cathedral at a small, small scale. In other words, we worked and we learned and we experienced how our work can come together to be a part of other people's lives. This was also the year of the Great Resignation, and though this seemed more like an, an act of optimism to me than one of resignation, so I've recoined the term and rephrased it, um, inspired by our students, as the Great Redirection. This year, a pilot and an immigration attorney both became piano tuners. A software engineer is becoming a furniture maker. A former cake decorator has become a bookbinder. We've had urban planners and high school teachers and administrators all become carpenters. Somehow, everyone wants to become a carpenter. This is not a new story for North Bennett. People have been changing their careers here for decades. But it did mark a moment when what North Bennett does suddenly aligned with the zeitgeist and North Bennett's steadfastness met this great upheaval. And all of you used that to create opportunities for yourselves. These opportunities to start your next chapters look like this. You'll be in places like the State Archives of North Carolina, at the Boston Athenaeum, and at the Conservation Labs at Haverford College. You found opportunities in architecture, building, and construction companies all around this area for both contemporary places and places pres preserving historic work, excuse me, historic work. You'll be at PASIC Security and at Advanced Lock and Key in Brockton. You'll be working at Cornell University, at the Aspen Music Festival, and at Steinway and Sons, and that's just to name a few of them. Even before we hand you your diplomas today, so many of you have found your next steps. You've found your great redirections. You'll be working nearby and all across the country. You'll even be working for our faculty and our alumni who help us create a virtuous circle of opportunity. And you'll hear a little bit more about that today. Some of this opportunity exists because North Bennett is in a truly dynamic and generous community of people who want to see all of our students succeed. This is an extended network of advisors and volunteers and champions who make so much of this work possible. You'll get to meet some of them today and you may have this morning at our reception. So let me thank the board of directors and advisors for always being on hand for smartly guiding and planning how North Bennett will grow and thrive. There are so many things that can distract during a year, but the board is always clear-eyed about progress for students, supporting faculty, and valuing staff. And they keep us focused with that larger context in mind. So, a time that seemed in the distance when you arrived um, is here, June 2022 and an opportunity that you hadn't yet, yet pictured is right in front of you. You built this moment, and you built it with your hard work and your openness to change and growth and your commitment to your projects and your programs. We are so excited now to get to know you as alumni and see the proof of North Bennett through you in the world. So congratulations, graduates. Welcome to being an alumni. I'm so happy to introduce this next person to you, to introduce Jeannie Thorndike, who is a graduate of our cabinet and furniture making program and now the chair of our board of directors. Jeannie has such a deep heart for North Bennett Street School and such a deep commitment to all of the members who make up the school. She's been a close thinking partner this year to so many of us and she helps keep us forward focused, looking for solutions and always thinking about the best that we can offer our students. Welcome back in a new role, Jeannie. Welcome back to graduation. Wow. 
Congratulations, talented graduates of violin making and repair, preservation carpentry, basic and advanced piano technology, locksmithing and security technology, jewelry making and repair, carpentry, cabinet and furniture making, and bookbinding. I still recall what it feels like to sit where you are today, feeling excited, proud, and grateful. You've learned an extraordinary amount from master teachers. You've been stretched to reach high standards you may not have known were possible. You've made mistakes and learned from the depths of frustration. And you've worked hard, persisted, and learned to achieve tolerances that escape the naked eye. Your fingers and your ears might now be your best friends because they've learned to feel and listen for imperfections. They certainly know when success has been achieved. It takes courage now to step out and share your skills and knowledge with potential clients, employers, colleagues, friends, and family, because you know you still have lots to learn. But I urge you to take confidence knowing that today you join North Bennett Street School's expansive network of alumni, which means you now have colleagues all over this country and internationally. Seek out our graduates for advice, inspiration, and business opportunities. Stay in touch with your classmates and others you've met at school. Find reasons to return and visit your instructors who will always be your mentors and curious about your work. Do something as simple as buy a decal and put it on your truck or car, or wear a t-shirt or hat from North Bennett Street, and you'll be surprised whom you meet in the most unexpected places. We all know you've attended school during difficult times, for which I believe you deserve extra recognition and acknowledgement. Likely your ability to build North Bennett Street friendships and professional connections has been hampered. However, it's never too late to build new relationships within our network, which will lead to others. Personally, I would love to meet each and every one of you, hear your story, and learn where you are headed. Go forth and share your knowledge. You've learned an enormous amount. In many ways, your education is just beginning. Graduate curious and continue to learn. Now we would like to recognize the recipient of this year's Distinguished Alumni Award. This award is given annually to a North Bennett Street School graduate for professional accomplishments, contributions to industry, and work with schools and organizations which promote excellence in craft. This year, I have the privilege to announce the Distinguished Alumni Award goes to Kurt Fieldhouse. <laughs> Kurt is a 1993 graduate of the Carpentry Program. He's the founder and owner of C2MG Builders in Topsfield, Massachusetts, and is always looking for ways to give back to North Bennett Street and to support carpentry students. He served as a carpentry program advisory committee member for over 10 years, and he works with our faculty to ensure the carpentry course and curriculum is focused on student success. Over the years, Kurt has hired countless North Bennett Street alums to work at C2MG, he often invites our students to collaborate on relevant construction projects so students can learn and acquire the skills and mentorship they need in the field. Some recent projects have included remodeling a ranch house during the fall and winter of 2019, building a timber frame pool house with a screen porch during the spring and summer of 2021, and last July he even invited the carpentry class to use his pool for an end of the year celebratory picnic. According to Peter Smith, our Carpentry department head, Kurt is always going above and beyond in a selfless manner that is seldom seen and worth recognizing. Kurt understands that to work with students, you must be accommodating, patient, and willing to sacrifice to ensure that the students receive an education, not just perform a task. We are extremely proud to claim Kurt as a North Bennett Street School alumnus. I'm happy to present the 2022 Distinguished Alumni Award to Kurt Fieldhouse. Oh boy, here we go. <clears throat> General Patton said pressure makes diamonds, so I'm either gonna shine or I'm gonna be thrown to the fire when I walk out on this one. Uh, the, the, the title of my speech is Grit. 
Good afternoon, distinguished guests, faculty, and now alumni. I'd like a quick point of clarification if me going first makes me the keynote speaker of this graduation or just the opening act for the mayor. <laughs> As well, I wonder if the mayor is thinking, OMG, I'm sharing the stage with, with distinguished alumni Kurt D. Fieldhouse from North Penn Street School. <laughs> It's been said to me that over the years, the North Bennett is the quote-unquote Harvard of the trades taught at this school. I'm now thinking I cannot re reply to anyone who asks where I went to school, I can say I went to Harvard. <laughs> and when they ask what program, I'll say I graduated from the Pauline Shaw School of Carpentry and Craftsmanship. This is simply error by omission. <laughs> when I learned that I was in the running for the award, I explained that I was a big deal to my wife. I hammered this home to points of exhaustion, and her typical response was to respond to me in her usual response, please don't be so you today. <laughs> when I found out I was indeed, um, when I was to indeed receive this award, she gave me a name tag for my, tag, for my desk with a smirk of sarcasm, never expecting me to utilize the humorous gift as a prop to show that I am truly a big deal. As such, I will attempt to deliver my less than five minute speech, I'm kind of wondering how long they gave the mayor, if they only gave me five minutes, without being so me. On second thought, I'm just gonna be me, brace for impact. I'm so thankful for my time and ongoing affiliation with the school that I have clearly received more from the school than I could ever give back. I was introduced to the school uh, from an army buddy, Jamie Crawford, that I am still friends with to this day. Jamie came to visit me from Ohio back in the early 90s, wanted me to take him to the school when he was visiting. I had never, ever heard of the school before, uh, prior, and it was, it was my friend from Ohio that led me to the school. I went, he did not. <laughs> I have been given a career that I love, uh, friends that I cherish, mentors that have guided me along the way, and truth be told, my receivership of this award is really more about those people than myself. Without those people guiding me, leading me, directing me, showing me, correcting me, I for sure would not be here today. All these things, I am of the belief bestowed by my creator, as I know to be God, as well, I am thankful just to be here and speak in such a historic house of God. A quick note of thanks to my wife, Jane, all my kids who I get to go home to at night. A special shout out to Jimmy Bocchetti. Um, and my entire office staff, you are the backbone and get the distinct privilege of catching all the balls I throw up in the air. <laughs> Jimmy, know that you are the spine of the company. Your insistence and dedication to accuracy never ceases to amaze, amaze me. To all the guys in the field grinding it out on behalf of the company, a great word of thanks. You all are the epitome of the Bible verse that states, iron sharpens iron. Lastly, to our clients we serve, Many thanks for entrusting us with your projects, large and small. I thought about it long and hard and the topics about what I could speak with, and I arrived at grit. Grit in the dictionary is designed as, de defined as courage, resolve, and strength of character. I believe this piece is every bit as important in your career and journey into all the trades as cutting rafters, coping crown, building staircases, as well as it's part of the craft that can be learned and developed just as the four mentioned. I look for grit when hiring new employees. I look for grit in meetings. I develop grit in my company culture. And at a fundamental level, understand that grit will overcome any obstacles, no matter whether personal, professional, financial, or spiritual. Why grit? Glad you asked. I believe grit in the trades is, seems to be vanishing. And that to be in the trades requires a certain level of this. Why? Construction's hard, at times hot, cold, wet, Difficult, heavy, tiring, challenging, all overcome with the possession of grit in your toolbox. Cutting rafters 20 feet in the air while snow is blowing sideways, grit gets it done. Sharpening the block plane to the point of releasing that thin wire off the iron, grit gets it done. Helping to unload sheetrock off the plasterers off a crane on Marlboro Street because you have only so much time, grit gets it done. Dealing with your boss when you made a mistake and going to him or her to let them know, grit gets it done. Staying late for a deadline, grit gets it done. Your coming to school shows your willingness as well as your passion not only to invest, but learn your craft. You have been taught skills at North Bennett Street School that ex exceeds the norm, 
giving you a leg up in the trades. My challenge to you, distinguished now alumni, find your grit. Find your grit and you'll find your way. Congratulations. about to read you a speech on grit if I don't change out the papers. <laughs> Thanks, Kurt. Kurt is really an example of the virtuous cycle I talked about a minute ago where uh, members of the North Bennett Street School community, alumni, many times go out, make their way, build opportunity, and turn back to the school. So Kurt, thank you so much. I know you've given real practical application to so many of our students. Thank you. I am so honored to get to introduce our graduation speaker to you. It is a thrill to have our mayor, Boston's mayor, celebrate our graduates today. It reflects the long relationship that North Bennett Street School has with the city, from our founding to our current partnerships with Boston Public Schools, as a neighbor to City Hall, and like the mayor, in our commitment to education and training as avenues for access and mobility. But there are also less formal reasons why it seemed so fitting to have her speak to us today. Many of us have gotten to know the mayor through her work across the city, not only as mayor, but through her path to get there. Her position on the Boston City Council, where just after three years of service, she was elected president of that council, becoming the first woman of color to serve in that role. Her accomplishments are many, as you know, both professionally and personally. But it's less these things that I want to focus on and more focus on her approach. Earlier, I spoke about the many paths that have brought you to North Bennett Street School, the many choices and work and risks that you took to be here. At most graduations, I talk about how a life and a career is built not by a grand plan, but by steady daily work, connecting and relying on other people offering what you can do well to the communities you're a part of. This is what has been so inspiring about Michelle Wu. Throughout her work and her campaign to become mayor, it was so clear that this was her good work building. Hers was a sustained effort at showing up, offering her talents, listening to people's needs, and putting concrete projects in place to address them. I'm struck by how much her position is informed by her commitment to communities all across Boston to engage the partners and fellow leaders with whom she can collaborate. And while she leads ambitious plans for the city, she does this by enfranchising other people, by focusing on the big picture, and simply taking the small steps that it will make a way there. Somehow she does this with unflagging optimism with a true belief in what is possible, what is essential, what we should all be striving to create. If these themes and approaches sound familiar, it's because these are the efforts, no matter your occupation, that will help you build your career and your path. No matter, no matter whether you're working in a neighborhood, building a home, working on a complicated conservation project, helping families or churches or schools with their instruments, or working as mayor, you'll be embedded in the shifting nuances and the great rewards of community. And you'll navigate this by listening, by finding strong collaborators, by showing up daily to offer your skills to what is at hand. Following our mayor's lead, you will be in very, very good company. And I hope our mayor will draw as much inspiration from the work that you do as we find in hers. Mayor Wu, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for bringing good people together to serve our city. And thank you for joining North Bennett Street School. Welcome. Good morning. 
Thank you so much, President Turner. Thank you, Jeannie, for your leadership. And congratulations, Kurt. Um, it turns out your Distinguished Alumni Award winner is also a mind reader. The first line of my prepared remarks says, OMG, I get to share the stage with Kurt Fieldhouse. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> we're on the same wavelength. Um, and thank you to all of the friends, family, parents, siblings, children who are, are gathered here and spilling out in, from outside in as well. Uh, we join you and share your pride in saying congratulations to this class of 2022. When I first received the invitation to speak with you all here to, today, I was a little bit overwhelmed. Um, it's not just because I'm actually quite introverted, and these days I have to speak publicly more times every week than I did my first 20 seven years of my life combined. But it also brought me back to some of my earliest days here in the city of Boston, long before I ever imagined that one day I could be serving in public office and certainly representing the entirety of this incredible city. The first place I ever lived in Boston after graduating from college was right across the street. I lived at 160 Salem Street and it was then uh, directly nearby the former location of the North Bennett Street School. In the mornings, I'd get to walk down the brick streets with the smell of freshly baking bread from Bova's, making that so delicious. And in the evenings, I'd get to see the steady stream of people coming in and out of the school, some looking quite tired, all looking quite energized by what was happening inside. And when there were moments to peek in, I don't know if this still happens now, but there used to be open house days for the community to come peek inside and learn about what was happening. I always took the chance to come learn a little bit more and just gaze in, in wonderment at the incredible craftsmanship and work happening. I will also note, um, when I was living here and directly in proximity to the former location of this school was when the Celtics last won the <laughs> finals. So I'm wearing to represent and hoping this is a good omen for all of us today. <laughs> but there's something special about this neighborhood, this community, something that makes you want to immerse yourself in all the little details. I didn't want it to be just a place where I would lay my head at night and figure out what to do for breakfast before heading out to work. I really wanted to live here, be part of this, absorb all that I could. I even signed up to take Italian classes that were offered in the neighborhood and tried as much as possible just to wander the amazing side streets and get to know all of the organizations here. I felt the way I think so many of us feel when we really begin to know and feel at home in a place. Like I had discovered almost a hidden treasure here and that this little corner of Boston was my own, connected to the history and long legacy of what so many before have done through grit, through hard work, and through a relentless belief in what, ha what can happen when we all come together and try to do our best for, for the next generation. If you had told the 23-year-old version of me back then that I would be back in this neighborhood all these years later as mayor of the city that I fell in love with, I would never have believed you. I grew up in a family where my immigrant parents told us over and over again, there are three things you have to do when you grow up. Make sure your job is stable, pays you a lot of money, and won't get you in trouble. Politics was not supposed to be anywhere near where I went. And in fact, my parents had spent many, many years trying to shield us from politics. They themselves were the children of immigrants as my grandparents had fled civil war in mainland China. And if anything, our job was just to keep our heads down and try to stay safe and, and stay comfortable in our own. If there's anything that we have seen during this pandemic, it's that no matter how much we try to stay on our own in our separate little boxes or screens or even hunkered down, unless we understand the ways in which we are all deeply connected and intertwined, we won't get to the health, the opportunity, and the prosperity that is possible and that we all deserve. So many of the institutions in this city are designed around that very idea. 
including this one. And that's why this school is so special and has been so visionary. Founded more than 140 years ago, North Bennett Street School is the oldest trade school in the country. And in many ways, even then, it was an institution far beyond its time. Established by suffragette and education champion, Pauline Agassiz Shaw, it was created for people like my parents, whose original mission, the original mission of the school was to provide training in various trades to the immigrant communities living here, to get stable jobs, support their families, and find their footing in this country. It was a mission grounded in the understanding that the best way to support any community is to invest in and empower community members to provide the skills and tools to build for ourselves the lives that we deserve. And so then, the school provided social services, functioning as a settlement house, and offering English language classes on top of the trades. It was unique in its inclusivity, training people of all genders, all ages, and in many ways, it was the engine behind the growth and vibrancy of this neighborhood, the neighborhood that came to be my first real home in Boston so many years later. As our city has continued to grow, so has this institution and its impact. Today, the North Bennett Street School touches every corner of every neighborhood in Boston. And today as then, the people who come to this place do so with the intention of building a better life, not only for yourselves, but for our whole communities. And I want to acknowledge all the ways in which you all have already begun to do that just in your time in this program from crafting and tuning the pianos and violins that reach the ears and hearts of more than 400,000 people at the Boston Symphony Orchestra every year, to framing art that moves and inspires visitors at the MFA, repairing instruments used to teach music in classrooms throughout our Boston public schools, restoring historic homes, churches, and mills across the Commonwealth. You all are engaged in the work of preserving not only the history of our buildings, but also the artifacts and the heartbeat within them. The old cookbooks and storybooks and Bibles, the pages that open windows into the narratives of our past. And you've done that work under extraordinary circumstances. There's not an industry or educational experience that COVID didn't disrupt. But for your work and your learning in particular, the challenges of not, having, not being able to learn in person are hard to overstate. I heard a little bit about graduation ceremonies in previous years, whether in small groups or without family or in the cold <laughs> in, very, in very small numbers. And so it is especially meaningful to be able to celebrate with you how much this city and this institution has overcome. You logged onto Zoom, picked up tools that your teachers handed you through open windows and made dovetail joints at your kitchen tables. And when classes resumed in person, some of you woke up at four or five in the morning to commute into the place that was one again, once again humming with activity. The buzzing of saws and roaring of torches and rusting of paper. I've also been told that the apple juice and Pop-Tarts in the food pantry didn't hurt as far as reasons to look forward to coming back in person. But you also balance this work with the work of living full-time lives outside this place. Flight attendants who flew flights on the weekends, teachers and accountants, parents and children, caregivers, all of you waking up early, staying up late, coming together to put in the work necessary to learn the skills that go into building and preserving the heart and soul of a place. That's what you've done here. And now that's what each of you are uniquely, expertly prepared to do that work out in our communities. This is the work that mends and weaves our city together, that makes this neighborhood and this entire city so special. When I look back on my time here or anywhere that we treasure across the city, what we remember are the details, the finer little things that you often don't realize until you're notice, often don't realize you're noticing until they become a part of you. And in that same way, during your time here, you all might have reached for a tool without really having to think about it. It had just become a natural extension and so ingrained in the work and the art that is now deeply infused in you. Yours are the hands that shape and restore and connect us. And right now, as our city, like so many across the country, continues to try to emerge from this pandemic and have an equitable recovery, as we battle so many different challenges from attacks against our democracy, rolling back of legislative protections for vulnerable communities, 
systemic racism, and pending climate change. We need all of you and the work that you do. Because it is in that connection, that hands-on work, the grit, and the little details, the moments of awe and wonder, how it feels to hold a beautifully bound book in your hands, the perfect curve of a violin scroll, coming as from someone who played in many a pit orchestra in my day, a piece of jewelry that catches the light in just the right way. These little things in concert with one another define what it is to live in a specific time, in a specific place, and for that place to feel like home. And like all art, those little details give us the energy and the will to move forward as a community, to do the big things and fight the big fights. We need all the energy we can get right now. We need it today and tomorrow and every day thereafter with so much at stake. This school is a place of such intention, such choice, and you are all here because you chose to be here. And now as you leave, I'd like to ask you to bring that intention with you. Bring the community you've built, bring the skills and knowledge you've acquired, bring your perseverance and your artistry and your vision, and choose our city. I know some of you might have arrangements elsewhere, but cancel them and stay in Boston. <laughs> Continue to build and mend and weave here in our neighborhoods and communities where there is so much building and mending to be done. You've all accomplished something incredible, and we're here to celebrate that. But really, we are here to celebrate you and all that's ahead in our communities because of you. You are parents and children, friends, mentors, neighbors, and support systems, and it's your love for each other, your values, the things you hold dear, your devotion to creating and protecting and preserving the beauty and craft in our world that will take you further than anything else. These are also the ways in which we need our city to be built and the ways in which we need you, again, here in Boston. <laughs> to the class of 2022, congratulations on all that you've done. Thank you in advance for all the incredible things you will do, for the people you'll help, and the people you will be. Thank you so much. Go Celtics! Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for all the ways you thought about who we are and what we do and how we connect very particularly to the city. Thank you so much for your remarks. The next uh, part of the ceremony will be honoring each and every one of you, our graduates, and we'll be inviting you to come up, receive your diplomas, and uh, be congratulated by your faculty. And to help us uh, see that part of the ceremony through, I'd like to introduce Claire Fruitman, our provost. Claire is a graduate of our cabinet and furniture making program. She is someone who sees North Bennett from every angle, every detail, every door, closet, attic, stairwell. Claire, thank you for all you do to hold us together. Welcome. Just have to get organized. Oh. That's better. <laughs> I'm a little vertically challenged. So as it says in the printed program, finishing the requirements for graduation at North Bennett Street School takes hard work, commitment, and dedication at the best of times. The students in this graduating class completed their programs during the continuing pandemic of COVID-19. We're here today to celebrate the extraordinary achievements of the class of 2022. So we're gonna give out some diplomas. I'll ask the instructors of each program to come forward first. And graduates, when I call your name, please come forward to accept your diploma. You'll start over on this side and then go across and down the stairs and back around and out. It's a little bit different from the past, but none of you graduated. Well, no, a few of you graduated before, it's true. Um, so I'd like you to take note of the special diploma covers made by our bookbinding students. <laughs> and
And the larger table holding the diplomas was made by current furniture student Svetlana Deneva. And And the smaller octagonal splay leg table in front of that was made by current furniture student Sam Allen. And to start, I'd like to welcome the bookbinding instructors Jeff Altapeter and Martha Kearsley to the front. We haven't done this for a while, so forgive us. <laughs> Graduating today in bookbinding, Lucy Dunphy Barsness. <laughs> Alexa Garvin. Chloe Goff. Martina Greco. Ariana Rutledge. I'd like to welcome violin making and repair instructor Roman Barnes and teaching assistant Nathan Abbey. <laughs> Graduating today in violin making and repair, Daniel Green. Hannah Landrigan Orm. <laughs> Ada Skank. <laughs> Elliot Smith. Please welcome the cabinet and furniture making instructors, Dan Faya, Lance Patterson, Jamie Pope, and Matt Wada. Graduating today in cabinet and furniture making, Melanie Block. <laughs> Conrad Chancet. <laughs> Joshua Curtis. Charlie Flowers. John Lofstedt.
Griffin Manos. Patrick McKinley. Robert Robichaud. Brendan Shanahan. Peter Stein. Canyon Swartz. Henry Wyman. Please welcome our carpentry instructors, Peter Smith and Brock Leyendecker, and <laughs> and teaching assistant Ciamaro Garcia couldn't be here today. Graduating today from carpentry, Parker Caraway. Danielle Shagnon. <laughs> Gavin Colby. <laughs> Madeline Colty. Bernard Del Vecchio. Austin Halsey. Artemis Haptenstahl. Nicole Harpin Pease. Derek Howard. Plamen Jetchev. Charles Lane. Patrick McEnany. Matthew Monks. Brian O'Donnell. Sean O'Neill. Viet Fan. Callahan Ross. Evan Rotini.
Pablo Ruiz. Jonathan Sheehan. James Silva. Alexander Swift. Please welcome jewelry making and repair instructor Ann Cahoon and teaching assistant Mariah Dose. <laughs> Graduating today in jewelry making and repair, Joanna Parrish. Please welcome locksmithing and security technology instructor, Eddie Dasius. <laughs> Graduating today in locksmithing and security technology, Brandon Freiberg. Christian Locke. George Montgomery. George Myers. Sunny No. Lancelot Pollock. Jerry Sims. Spencer Urban. Please welcome the Preservation Carpentry instructors Stephen O'Shaughnessy and Michael Burry. Graduating today from Preservation Carpentry, Stephen Grunewald. Jonathan Kankel. Colin McKenna. Nicholas Michaelides. <laughs> Lily Newdell. <laughs> Laura Shea. <laughs> Corbett Walser.
please welcome the piano technology instructors, Debbie Sear, Louis Del Benny, Sean Hansen, Emily Townsend, teaching assistant Jennifer Chen, and teaching assistant Will Roper. Graduating today from basic piano technology, Carol Arbogast. <laughs> Ryan Bergfors. <laughs> Michael Carlin. Jacob Conrad. <laughs> Joseph Harrington. <laughs> Gino Jordan. <laughs> Gavin Landis. Jordan Lyle. Miranda Mason. Nathan Money. Kaylee Myers. <laughs> Isabel Rodriguez. <laughs> Leanna Spellman. Amin Tabrizi. <laughs> Philip Taylor. <laughs> Wesley Williams. Brittany York. And graduating today from advanced piano technology, Scott Hankins. Elisha Katamura. Corey Malaw. <laughs> Lindsay Robeson. <laughs> Susan Sit. Madeline Woodrum. <laughs> Shin Wu.
don't think I forgot anybody. We're good. Before we leave, I have a few parting words, and it's highly likely that I'm going to cry. The first time I attended a North Bennett Street School graduation was when I was a new cabinet and furniture making student in 1994. Walter McDonald, my predecessor, was in this spot announcing the names. And when he finished, he had some words of wisdom and encouragement, which I found so inspiring. I've been back for every graduation since then, long before I worked here, and even when I didn't know anyone who was graduating. In the years after I graduated, I would walk over from the shop. I just sort of thought of it as my annual pep talk. So I'd like to share those words with you today. And I hope that you'll find them as inspiring as I still do. I knew this was going to happen. The fife and drum made me cry. <laughs> we may be almost finished here, but it's far from over. There's a lot more to do. There will be mistakes from which you will learn. There will be customers you hope never to see again. New methods, equipment, and materials will change the way you work. You will get better and faster. If you don't get it right, you have a chance to do it better the next time. There will be wonderful customers for whom you will do work over your entire career, and they will recommend you to their friends, and they will become your friends because of your work. There will be a time when you finish a job, look at it, and realize that just a short time ago you could not have done it and would not have even known where to start and you will realize just how far you've come. So in closing, may your tools stay sharp, may your work be scheduled a year in advance, may your customers always be satisfied, pay in a timely manner and without argument. You have skills and knowledge that few people share. You can use these skills to make life better for others you can be justifiably proud of jobs well done. So now we're finished here. It's time for you to go out there and do great work. Congratulations.